So when you start at Google Drive, you'll notice the website here if you just type drive.google.com, you will be taken to the home page for Google Drive and very simply all you need to do is click the sign in button. If you already have a Google account, it, meaning if you use Gmail or if you use Google Apps, this will log directly into the Drive account for your application or your Gmail account. So we're going to do that right now. We're logged in both personally and through Google Apps. We're going to click Sign In and it's going to take us to our application tab. So we will just type in our username and password, click Sign In, and it's going to take us directly to Google Drive and you are going to get a pop-up video here with a little bit of information. It's the new home for Google Docs, Files and Folders. Uh, essentially you get five gigabytes free to start with. So this is hosting and storage space uh, of five gigabytes of data space for you to share, create and manage files, sync it directly from your computer and then access it on the go with your mobile app right now offered through Android devices, soon to be offered through iPhone and other iPhone type devices. Uh, so you will click try Google Drive and you will see here a little bit of information in terms of the interface. It looks a lot like the old Google Docs where you have a create button here. You have my drive files that are shared with you um, and then you have a little bit of some tool tips here which we will just dismiss. And this is the area up here, your settings where you can drop down and manage your uh, Google Docs and Google Drive system. Now when you first enter Drive, what you're going to do is want to download Google Drive so that you can sync files directly between your Mac or your PC and the cloud, Google Drive Cloud. And it will recognize which computer you have and you can click this button right here and just download. So we're going to do that. You'll have to agree to a terms of service and we recommend that you read the terms of service and we will get that folder. And once that's done downloading, which it is, we can then go and run that file. And you'll see here it's installing, running, and then it's asking us to take Google Drive and drop it into our applications, which we will do. Once that's done copying, we will have access to Google Drive. So we will close this file and then open up Google Drive through our applications. And we'll open that through here, go into Applications. We page down to Google Drive. We will open that and run it. You'll get your status message warning you that it's a file from the internet and you should be careful about opening that. We will type in apparently the wrong password for our system. And again, we're asked to sign into Google Drive. And this file will run. Welcome to Google Drive. A little bit of information on how it works. Syncing files. And then you can choose advanced setup to determine which files sync and how often they sync. So you can sync only some folders. And obviously you could sync Google Docs files to enable offline viewing. And then you could tell it to start Google Drive automatically when your computer starts. And that's generally a good idea. It will take up some system memory to run that file. Um, but if you want to keep your computer files up to date on your Google Drive, that's a good idea. That way you don't miss out on doing a change that might not show up later on. Now it's worth mentioning that Google does give you five gigabytes for free and I'm just going to move this folder off to the side for just a moment and we are going to take a look at Google Drive storage options. Now the Google Drive storage upgrade options are actually quite affordable. I'll open up a new window here and I'm going to paste in an address. It's google.com forward slash settings forward slash storage. 
and that gets you to the website which explains the different prices for storage. You could see here the free option is 5 gigabits of drive space and 1 gigabyte of uh, Picasa space for your photos. For an additional 25 gigabytes, you get $2.49 per month, which is amazing, and that's shared between your Google Drive and your Picasa. For 100 gigabytes, it's $5 a month. So basically, what you're talking about here is this is almost the size of a, an entire computer hard drive for just $5 a month, and everything you have is backed up, saved, and stored securely on Google servers. If you need more space, you can see here up to 16 terabytes available. You can upgrade your account, and if you just breeze over that, we can show you how much it costs. 200 gigabytes is $10 a month. This is, for less than $100 a year, you can have 200 gigabytes of storage all the way up to 16 terabytes of data. It's an amazing amount of money, and it is a lot cheaper than most of the other storage companies out there. Uh, if you think of companies like Dropbox, even iCloud from Apple are much more expensive when it comes to the amount of storage you get. So this might be an option for you if you want to back up everything on your hard drive, you can do so by upgrading your storage. Obviously, if you have less than 5 gigabytes of data on your hard drive, you'll be able to handle that with the free version of Google Drive. Um, and 5 gigabytes is a lot of space. But if you do have more, and most likely you do, you might want to upgrade to one of these other plans, which again is extremely affordable. So for now, we'll just close this out, and we'll return back to Google Drive, and obviously we can close this system here because we have installed Google Drive, and I will bring that again, go down to Applications, and I will open Google Drive and we will set the Google Drive settings. So we don't want to sync all of the folders on my computer to Google Drive because I have much more information than will actually fit. So we're going to sync only specific folders. And this gives you the folder location. So it's located in my hard drive under the folder Google Drive, which is fine. If you want to change that, you can click here and set it either for your desktop or some other location. And we're telling it only to sync some folders and we also want it to sync to our computer our Google Docs files and we can enable offline viewing by clicking on this message it'll open up a browser and give us some information about how to sync our offline files we'll return again and we will open up Google Drive and start the sync and this will basically pull up your Google Drive account and it'll give you a message. It pops up this little Google Drive icon into your status bar. It's similar on the, the Windows machines as well. And all you need to do is drag and drop files into your Google Drive folder. So anything that we want to keep up to date on the drive, we just drag and drop. So this is a finder window. I will open up a new finder window and I will show you how easy this is. So here is my computer here. I'll just go to a general file here and you'll see I have, let's take a look at just some documents. A folder in my documents folder just to show you I have a couple different types I have a PDF I have a Microsoft Word document a PSD which is a Photoshop and then actually a folder that holds a few other Photoshop files so I will take this folder and simply drag it to the Google Drive and it shows how fast it updates here the check mark what you'll see is this little icon showing that it's updating it's a blue kind of recycle icon and then a check mark next to it saying that it is updated and synced and now it's doing this folder which itself has a couple files and they're all updated we have check marks on everything so you'll see this folder here called triple Z files to share what we'll do is close these windows and you'll see even before we refresh the screen the triple Z files to share folder is here on my drive and if we expand this we'll see that you can even expand it further and see the other folders we'll click on it once and it'll show you the three folders I have here along with the icons for the type of 
program it is. For instance, you see the Adobe icon for the PDF, the Word icon for the doc, the photo type of background icon for the Photoshop document. So what you see here really is nothing more than the old Google Docs area. And you'll see this has changed to Drive, and it's pretty much the same functionality. You have your collections or your folders and your files here. You have your folder tree down here, a link to download Google Drive, which we've already done, obviously. And then you have your different settings here. And we'll take a moment and look through these settings as well. So let's click under settings. And this will take us to the general Google Drive settings again. Not too much here. You could choose your language, default to English. Uh, you can choose your time zone uh, and determine where new items open up. You can have each one open up in a new window or the current window. These are all pretty simple. It is the same kind of thing. And then, of course, you see here your storage and just the files that we uploaded already are here. 56 megabytes, which is only 1% of my total 5120 megabytes or 5 gigs. And you'll see here that stored files, PDF, doc, and JPEG count toward the stored limit. Google Docs format files don't use up storage space. And then you can turn on some features for editing. We'll go back to Google Drive. Now, if you come under here and you hit Create, you can create a Google document, a presentation, a spreadsheet, form, drawing, folder, or you can look into some apps that can be used to create documents. Any of these types of documents don't take up any space whatsoever. So if you're an organization that will create docs through Google Docs and spreadsheets, you can actually exist completely in Google Docs without taking up any space in your Google Docs folders, meaning five gigs could be enough space for you to get done all your document needs just by using the Google Docs. For some organizations, that might not be possible. For other organizations, it might not be practical. And for some, it actually may be a viable option. So whichever way you choose to go, you can just click over here and click on settings again and see what your storage usage is. In the next video, we will take a look at viewing some of these, also creating other folders, and then actually syncing it to your drive.